do this? Should we try this again? Should we just start again? Yeah, just restart it. Okay. Yeah, this is only take two. Uh, but we're gonna leave in us talking about take two, and not talk about what happened before, so that the audience will hear it, and then they'll be like, "What happened?" And Did you get that, will... AJ? Did you get that? <laughs> no, he's not listening. Welcome, friends, uh, to another episode of IPN's Movie Night, the film club podcast where we share love for movies, good and bad. I'm Alexander Psius, your co-host, and I'm <clears throat> Carter Thomas, your other co-host. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me and, for clearing my throat. Yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. Uh, we have a guest on today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, guest? Oh, well, hello. Hi, um, my, my name is Cameron. Uh, I am a natural-born photographer, but just discovered that I'm good at it recently. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, cool. I was going to say, you're probably better at selling yourself than I am. So, uh, yeah, Cameron, you... Uh, film with us at IPN you yeah been, it's, a, it's a fun time a lot yeah you've been in a lot of videos it's since like kind of the beginning too so you've kind of been like yeah OG. a little bit like I kind of came in, in the early days and just mostly because I know Zach from like back in second grade like we know each other for like almost 20 years now holy shit um, wow 20 years well <laughs> like existential. i don't know like 16 probably but i like to exaggerate you know yeah yeah that's fine <laughs> that's pretty, pretty much 20 you're yeah, only going up, you're only going up from 16 yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah so like since then like he was just like join us and have fun with making videos and shit and i was like all right cool i'll do that and yeah, then i stopped for like a good like year or two i don't know why i think i got caught up in some shit <laughs> mm. no that's fine i mean like when you came back it was just like you know it was like you were still here so it's, oh yeah it's Everybody all welcome good back like i was part of the family and yeah I love it. it is it is a family well um speaking of mm, no there's no segue speaking what movie did you <laughs> Yeah, there's no segue. Need to that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you like? Would you like to talk about the movie that you brought in for us today? Uh, yeah, this is one of my absolute favorite DC movies, hands down. I don't give a fuck about any new Batman movie. You can say whatever you want. V for Vendetta is my hands down favorite DC movie, and not a lot of people know that it's a DC movie. Yeah, which is on. I mean, to be fair, like. I remember it was a comic book movie. I didn't remember it was a DC movie. So when the DC logo came up, I was just like. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. I 100% forgot about that. Yeah, like, it was one of my favorite DC comics that I read. It was one of the earliest ones that I read before I read Batman. So when I saw that they made a movie of it, of course, it just instantly became my favorite. Right. Uh, when was the the first time you saw it? Did you see it in theaters? Uh, I did not. I was too young, I think, uh, to really like have beyond like that spectrum of movies. But, like, I read the comics because my brother had it. And then when I was older, it was, like, I want to say when I was in, like, middle school-ish, like, seventh, eighth grade is when I found out about the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know I was young. I don't remember exactly. My time frame is very off. Oh, okay. But, I mean. Yeah, I know I was very young when I watched this movie. And it was, like, one of the first comics I read. And, yeah, I watched nice. it ever since. Yeah, the cinematography of it was amazing. It just always caught my eye like the poetry of it just it always caught my eye yeah yeah i mean i mean we can kind of talk a bit a bit more as we go along but uh did you want to do a like a synopsis of like or like in your own words kind of go through like the plot of of this movie oh yeah well i mean it's really hard to ignore a lot of the implications of revolution because this movie is basically about revolution and uh it's a pretty interesting concept because it's like it's just set in this dystopian future esque kind of time where it's not really future but it seems like it is, and it's yeah. like set in England and one little or one big uh, like government is taking over and it's it's hard to explain <laughs> for me right now. Yeah, it. it I mean, it's pretty. It almost feels like a di it's dictatorship. America. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like beat around the bush a little bit, honestly. But like, you know, honestly, we gotta go through. We gotta go yeah, through we gotta just rip the band aid off, honestly. Because I was trying to start off by saying it's hard to ignore the impl implications of re revolution with the protests and everything going on in America. But like, that's what this movie is about—like protest of a government that is 
uh, like overrun like the whole country and oppress them. So one yeah. man is like trying to change that, but it's not really like about the man. It's about like the idea because that's like the whole yeah. part of it. Yeah, it's like a big theme of the movie. Yeah, like the uh, whole intro when it started out. Like my favorite part even is just like the intro where they say, "Remember, remember the fifth of November." Yeah, the gunpowder uh, treason and plot. I know no reason why the gunpowder treason should be ever forgot. Which and, was a fucking bar. Dude, oh yeah, for that like, time. amazing, amazing. <laughs> and I was like, that just like shows it's not really like. A person that can start a revolution is the idea that can start a revolution. Yeah. yeah. That was I, like a really I feel like that's thing. a good, like, underlying premise of this movie, a way to explain this movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess we can kind of, like, just to kind of, I mean, we kind of went over, like, the small bits of it, but we'll dissect it a bit. But uh, I guess, like, overall thoughts specifically, uh, I mean, Carter, obviously, we know Cameron, you know your thoughts, but Carter, what was your overall thoughts with the movie well i'd never seen it before and so this was my first time giving it a watch and i knew i knew what it was like about but i liked it i thought it was good i thought it was really good um i liked how there was a lot of really good pacing in the beginning like it didn't waste it didn't waste a lot of time it kind of just got you into like the action of everything right away then in the middle you know it had like a little bit of a slowdown Still kept it interesting. I actually took a few notes while I was okay. watching this. Yeah, I um, took one of you. <laughs> um, here, let me see. Um, uh, like so, like the very beginning of the movie when it's like V and Natalie Portman are getting ready in their respective mirrors, and we get like this whole exposition from the dude on the news. I thought that was pretty cool because it kind of sets up how V and Evie, Natalie Portman, are pretty much are one in the same kind of that that's mm-hmm. kind of like a theme that they go through the entire movie. My next note, um, anti-government. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that was like the biggest <laughs> like notion of this movie, like anti-government. Yeah. Big theme. Yeah. And I, I liked it. I liked it. What about, what about you, Alex? I, uh, well, I saw this movie in theaters, uh, like, um, like, yeah, like when it came out 2005, I believe. Um, and, it was, you know, kind of on that beginning cusp of like comic book movies, but like obscure comic book movies. And I, and I knew it was a comic book, but I didn't know anything about it. Um, I, I know I've watched it a little bit between them, but watching it like right now, this movie is, it, it speaks so much. Like you said it pretty well, Cameron, where it speaks so much on today that I was just, I was, I didn't take any notes because I was kind of hooked the whole time. I was yeah, just like, I almost wow. didn't take notes like halfway through. I was like, oh, wait, I should be writing things down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I usually do. Sometimes I don't depending on the movie, but I was this one. I was just like, yeah, I should write notes, so but compelling. I was, I was just like, oh, this movie just, it just goes like it has very snappy scenes. It has really good action fight scenes. And, and from what I remember, uh, when I watched it, uh, when I was younger to watch it now is like it, it does have a more comic booky feel for some reason when I watched it um, when I was 14, I think it's how old I was when it came out. I, I it yeah, felt a bit more. I had to have been like 10, 11. <laughs> I was nine. Gosh, fuck you guys. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, when I saw it, uh, you know, I, I felt like it was a bit more sophisticated and not to say that it's not, I'm just, Watching it now, I'm realizing how much how comic booky it actually is. Like specifically, some of the fight scenes and the styles of it, or the 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 style, the way they shoot the fight scenes, it feels very comic book movie type. Yeah. Now that we've like seen so much, we can kind of we see like, oh, how do comic book movies usually look? And I feel like they kind of had they kind of started that look, you know. Um, and that's why I really kind of appreciate it. Is like it was this kind of usher into like what what's a sophisticated comic book movie can look like you know um so i really had a lot of fun with with this one um and you know hugo weaving 
is incredible <laughs> in oh, it yeah. as V, like even though you don't see, you don't his, see face. his face. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's like it's a great just, performance. It's yeah. really strange. He's very yeah. poetic with the way he like his movement is. Like it's great. Actually, did he did he just do the voice or did he actually play? I like, was think he, actually he in the was costume? the costume too, wasn't he? Oh yeah, it at just least says that's v. what I would assume. Yeah, it uh, at least and on IMDb. Just ADR'd his voice. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think yeah on uh, IMDb it just says Hugo Weaving as V. It doesn't say like V voice or whatever. Let me do some. Let me do some sleuth work. Yeah. Some sleuth work. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the writing alone was just so clever. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. That that was. I think that was a testament to like. Yeah, the, like the tying, pacing of it. Yeah, like the way they tied in certain like character arcs to certain scenes. Um, like in the beginning, like uh, Carter said, when they opened up with the newscast, and they were kind of tying in who V is and Evie at the same time. Mm -hmm. It kind of like, that was really clever right there, how they did that. And they just kind of kept that pattern throughout the entire, uh, the entire movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it really shows that like, that they, Oh, sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, Uh, it really shows, um, like just how, how every action like wasn't wasted with which he, like every shot was like intentional and and um you know there wasn't it didn't feel like there was any fluff every 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 scene felt like it had stake to it you know yeah um so it's i don't know it's just it's the best way i can describe it it's just a sophisticated comic book movie <laughs> yeah and that's why like i kind of fell in love with it because i kind of like that smart comedy smart like action you know like something that's yeah. just very cleverly done that makes you like think more not something that's kind of like laid out for you like a lot of the superhero movies that they kind of put out where yeah it's, it's really laid out for you there's a definite hero there's a definite like bad guy and the hero always wins it's like no this movie is about an idea overcoming oppression and yeah, it's not about like the physical of it. It's about what like you the mindset. Yeah, the mindset of it. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it it is kind of interesting because it does it does have that that moment a lot where V is supposed to be seen as the. Um, I mean, I mean, not seen. He's presented as the the protagonist or mm. as a, a hero, but like through the entire movie, the whole point is that like. He's, he's, you know, killing people. He's blowing things up, and it's just like, it's funny because, you know, Evie is supposed to be like the audience where she's like, oh, you're you're just as bad as them by killing people or whatever. Yeah, right. Is blowing up buildings really gonna solve he, it? Like, yeah, but but like every time he comes back with just like, well, Evie, if you think of it this way, and blah, yeah. you know, like he explains yeah. his actions. Yeah, I even wrote a note about that too. Like, she's like uh, damn it. Yeah, the whole premise of it, like when he's trying to blow up, like I mean, if you haven't seen, it, it's kind of a spoiler, but not really. But like he's kind of yeah, he blows up. Uh, yeah, he uh, blew up a uh, parliament, and what he said was um, like. The building is a symbol, and mm-hmm. uh, it's the symbol that has been given power by the people who were like given it bad power. So if you take away that symbol of oppression, take away that symbol, it has no more power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, that and it's funny because it, he, he, I feel like he explains himself in that way so many times that yeah. I'm just like, God damn it, V. You're so right. <laughs> like his like, rebuttal is just like you. right off the bat too. It's not even like a hesitation. It's great. Yeah, he's like, I've had a lot of time to think about this stuff. Seriously, especially when you have no eyes and your entire body is just charred. You just sit in agony and think about all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, around his his. Tro- trophy i don't know his house underground <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, really, it's a trophy room like that yeah, thing. yeah oh man he has literally every piece of history in that room hey. Carter, i feel like you're gonna say hey. something oh uh, yeah one of my notes was um v's house is sweet <laughs> nice okay 
<laughs> also, well, I think it was. I, I don't know where no, it is, but <laughs> oh, it's in a train station. Because how else would the train? Well, yeah, because the train's yeah. underground. Yeah, I just like maybe I was like <laughs> looking at my phone together. or something when they explained that better. But <laughs> I was just like, where, I'm like, where does he live? Where people aren't finding him. Well, it Mug. wasn't really like explained. It was yeah. more of like that train Welcome. scene when he said, "Oh, I spent ten years digging all of this out." It kind of makes you think, "Oh, he probably made a home base uh, there sure. while he was digging all the train uh, tracks out and laying his own tracks." That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. That does all make right. sense. Explained. <laughs> yep. <Good> explained. <laughs> and I have uh, an answer to um, whether or not. He, uh, he, it was just voice acting. So, okay. um, pretty much certain scenes within the movie feature James Purefoy as V, who was originally cast in the role, but replaced by Hugo Weaving four weeks into filming. Weaving's voice was simply dubbed over Purefoy's performance in post production. Uh, so, so it technically wasn't, wasn't Hugo Weaving? Um, for the first four weeks, it wasn't. Oh, okay. And oh, then okay. after yeah, that's that, right, that's right. it was. Oh. Hmm. So he did some some voice acting and some real acting. What? Well, that's, that's pretty. I that's mean, that's a fun fact. That's a fun I, fact yeah. For, was, for the day. I mean, I'm just thinking like I don't know who. What scenes would that be, and who would have done it? It depends on on their shooting schedule. If they shot in sequence, right? I doubt but, it. Though. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it is kind of hard to like really picture v's voice or sorry not picture but imagine v's voice and anything other than hugo weaving so yeah. it's kind of it's kind of i'm just like debating like would <laughs> would he have been as like convincing or charismatic <laughs> if it was anybody else um i don't know just, well that's kind of like the same question as uh lord of the rings because getting off the gray was two different people or actually not lord of the rings um Dumbledore. Dumb, uh, Harry yeah, Dumbledore. Oh, Harry yeah, Harry Potter. Yeah, Dumbledore was. Now. Yeah, Dumbledore <laughs> was uh, two different people, and I honestly didn't tell the difference when I first watched it. And then when I looked it up, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> oh, it, it was two. Yeah, and, and it probably. Yeah, I mean, a little side tangent, but that probably helped because the third movie looked so different compared yeah, to the first yeah. two. Yeah, he did um, look younger though, because when I was watching it, um, the other day, I was just like, "Oh man, we were." Like, why does Dumbledore look younger? And it's like, ah, the other one's dead. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you kind of get to that realization. And you're just like, oh, <laughs> figured it out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so Natalie, Natalie Portman's in this, yeah, which is which awesome because I, I love her acting. I do. I yeah, and I do love Natalie Portman. I am wondering, did anybody feel a little off by her accent? Like, did any did anyone have any issues with her accent? She no. sounded like she had a little bit of two accents because there was a point where I heard a bit of Scottish and British. <laughs> it, it it was just like I just kept I guess what I kept thinking of when when she when I heard her doing the accent was like she has this kind of airy voice when she talks, and mm. I don't know if that's actually how she talks or or. Or that's just like, like that's it really, really how she was doing it when she did like the British accent. And so like I just that was just something that I just kept thinking about when I saw her performance. But granted, it was like it was still like a really great performance. Yeah, I just I, there was just a little like tidbit about her, her character and and kind of like I was like, why don't you just cast a, a British person? <laughs> like literally yeah, everyone I mean, else in this movie is British except for her. But Except I mean, hey, her. it's Natalie Portman. Because they had to show that this is also happening in America. But mm. giving her that's, that's that silly the voice. Yeah, that's the relating bridge right there. <laughs> well, not silly voice. It was a British accent. That hundred millions of people talk like that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean you, can, you can still say it's silly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it really I'm is. Saying, I'm saying that like Texas isn't a part of the United States. They're not. <laughs> they're own own um, they have their own but yeah, the, the one thing or other things about this movie was um, like just some of the other cast in it, like Stephen Fry was in it, who was like, again, I hadn't seen a movie with Stephen Fry in it in a while but i forget uh, i also forget like how good he is and just his character almost being like a mm, 
not like V, but you know, in in the same vein where he's just like, I believe that you know our the people should be able to speak freely and criticize and stuff like that. And, and I was just like, oh, like of course Stephen Fry, like the one person. Mm-hmm. The one actor in this movie is also like the good guy. <laughs> it's yeah, like, this God, super because... like liberal guy who just finds humor in everything. Yeah, I, I just I just don't think I would have been able to like to take it if he ended up being bad. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, like when he when he actually showed his like memorabilia, like at first because I wasn't fully paying attention because I've seen this movie so many times. Right. Oh, uh, like I looked. I was like, "Wait a minute, was he the bad guy?" Because he, because I saw that like Nazi flag, and I was like, "Holy shit! Wait, what? Hold on, he was a secret." Oh no, hold on. It's yeah. His history stuff. He's yeah. he's a collector. <laughs> he's doing it out of because I saw like the painting of the Chancellor's face and the Queen Elizabeth. Dress, right. Right. That was hilarious. So. He yeah, bites him in the ass weird. later, though. That fucking Quran got him murdered. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. of all the things that was in there, though, like there was literally a straight up picture of the Chancellor in a dress with makeup, and the Quran was the one that got him killed. <laughs> yeah, well, because they they had to like, yeah, because they well they probably had to like excuse it to the public somehow, like because it's like because like the the movie along with like its dystopian thing it preaches like uh, Islamophobia like um Mm. homophobia yeah homophobia do they do they go over homophobia yeah uh when she gets uh captured quote unquote uh oh that yeah that character that that character oh yeah yes yes yeah of course i forgot i forgot about that whole part but yeah Yeah, how could you forget about that part that part made me cry holy shit god is in the rain holy fuck (laughs) like (laughs) god damn how can you Apparently, that? for that for that scene when she's talking about how she was in a movie mm-hmm. and you see the movie crew, that's like the movie crew. Oh, okay, you know oh, what? I had it? that. I, I had that thought. I was like, I was like, I wonder if they just like they doubled on it, or if they actually like just like, oh, we'll just take a camera, like a B camera, and just shoot the A camera and the crew. That's pretty and much just, what they and did. just do that. And <laughs> I was like, I mean, it makes sense. They're like, we like, don't have to worry about getting stuff out of shot. Like, get it in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Boom, it, boom is not in in shot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, every every time a movie does that, they're like they they show like the industry aspect, like a uh, side tangent, but the Tropic Thunder. Anytime mm. it's like you're filming a movie about a movie, a movie. it just I, I'm like. I have to like think twice as hard <laughs> about how that's going to look and the yeah. production aspect, like the and actual who's recording who. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just like, wait, are these, are we also filming the others? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I think about that a lot. And that, that part uh, made me think of it. Um, but... Yeah. <laughs> any other, any other favorite, favorite parts? When right. Stephen Fry did that fucking show. Oh, that was hilarious. When he made the show, when it was just like making fun of the Chancellor and stuff. I'm just like, I knew he was going to die when that happened. I was like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You think, yeah. You, you think you're you think you're untouchable? Save. Yeah, he's like, just save me. You're my manager. Get me out of this. Like, what the fuck? You're not yeah. going to die. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that too because like he was talking on the phone. With somebody afterwards, and he's yeah, that was like, his manager. Oh. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, are yeah. For? yeah. He's just like, what, what, what am I gonna do? Blah blah blah. It's just like, do you live in this country? Like, <laughs> have you seen? You know, you're like you're the most censored station, and you did something like this. Like, what yeah, what do you think is <laughs> so, gonna like, happen? <laughs> it's like it. I think what what did my note say? I took a note about it. Oh, this was the this was the last note I said. Uh, this late night host fucking roasted them. LMAO. <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah, much though, was... he pretty much like. But also, did you see that fucking weird ass dude with the huge ass teeth watching the TV on the couch? <laughs> like that shit threw me off. Every time they cut to his scene, like with the little girl and the dad and the mom. Like with the glass, like the little girl. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The dad was it had the these family? fuck ass fucking teeth that just <laughs> threw me off. I was looking at, that, I was like, wait a minute, hold on, I'm trying to pay attention to this fucking thing, and then I just see these huge ass <laughs> teeth. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like horse teeth. <laughs> uh, hey, <laughs> wow. Brit- British people don't have good 
teeth, okay? Uh, no, <laughs> like, I, don't. I don't get it, though. It was over the top. <laughs> this is, nah, this nah. episode is alienating all of our overseas listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, I mean... <laughs> It was, no, was kind of done in the movie, though. Like, they kind of put the, the shit out there, you know, to be yeah. <laughs> What I did like was uh, one of my favorite bits was, like, it was a bit down the road. And I can't, I can't remember entirely what part of the movie it happened. But it was um, when the masks started, like, being sent out to everybody. And, oh, like, it's showing, cool. like, the, yeah, it's showing, like, all, like, the chaos that's going about with everyone wearing the masks and yeah. stuff. So. Um, but it did us, it, it did bring up to my attention. So like the part where that little girl who is like really taking a liking to, to V and like, you know, like, like all the, what he's promoting and stuff like that. She's going around with the mask, like, you know, v- vandalizing, doing other oh, stuff. Yeah, spray painting then, the v. yeah. Yeah. And then she gets spoiler. She gets shot. So like, but she oh, doesn't yeah. really get shot. That was like a. That no, was she, like in the. She no, she does. does. No, she, no, because she she's no, she's don't they show her alive? Because no. they they. Cause so I thought what happened because I forgot who was saying this, but there's like oh, so this is what's gonna happen. Like like some like something someone's gonna do something dumb and violent, and then they like shoot. Then like we see that girl get shot, but then we see her like I thought we saw her alive like near the end of the movie. So like the well, thing that at the end which is hypothetical. So that ends no no no. The ending was supposed to be hypothetical or it was supposed to be symbolic. The 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 ending so we're j- jumping a bit to the ending. Um it's coming up to like a year later the 5th of November where they're supposed to blow up where he's trying to plan to blow up parliament. And the yeah. I, the whole point is that he's giving people a year to to reminisce in the idea that their government is mm. is corrupt. trying to control you yeah. yeah it's corrupt essentially yeah. so the point of everybody dressing up as v at the uh, 5th of november and then going up to the part to parliament it was it's symbolic of that like this idea it resembles everybody yeah people who have died people who are still alive and that's why when you see like because you even see the 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 couple you mm-hmm. see um I don't. I don't remember her name, but the the one who left the note, the uh, Valerie, Valerie was Valerie. Valerie. Do we? Val- yeah. yeah, you see them too, and they take yeah. off their masks. So it's supposed to be like everybody who has died for, yeah, who, has, who represents the yeah, idea. Because that's of what gives freedom. that uh, line that Natalie Portman gives at the end. V is my mother, my father, my brother. V is me. V is you. V is all of us. Like that yeah. line gives more power once you see that like scene of everybody walking up and that like including girl. including the girl and like that was the one and I it's funny that you said that card because when the first time I saw it I was confused by that too mm-hmm. I was just like oh okay so that thing earlier was just like a, a, a hypothetical. hypothetical yeah yeah no I think she actually did die no yeah she got <laughs> shot like that was the writer's clever way of tying in two different stories to save time basically instead of doing two separate scenes like of that girl vandalizing and then getting shot, it was him telling what's going to happen while that was happening. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like, like an inner kind of thing. Please. Good job. Oh, yeah. See, that was another thing. Wait, the Wachowskis... Did they direct this? They only, no, they they only wrote the script. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's right. That's right. I was like, the, the Wachowskis had, had a hand in it, and I couldn't remember. Yeah, they, that's yeah. that's what it was. They wrote. I wonder it. how I wonder how it would have looked if they would have if they would have directed it too. I wonder what the hmm. what the deal with that was because visual like because like the script is solid and I think the visuals of the movie wouldn't be like how it is right now wouldn't be far off from probably something they would have yeah that them two would have thought of because they're fucking like good good movies or bad movies they have a vision you know yeah <laughs> and, and say what you will about jupiter ascending they can tell a mean story <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh they knew they knew what they they wanted that shit to look like so good yeah, for them that's like um um uh speed racer that was the other one which is i don't think you, yeah you haven't, yeah. You haven't oh, oh. Yeah. uh you haven't seen carter but 
yeah, that that's another one. I'm just like, how do you like have that visual? Wait, am I? okay, never mind. For some reason, I was just like, wait, they did direct it. Yeah, yes, they did. It, yeah, it's, they did. it's pretty obvious. Like, you know, <laughs> once you see it, you're just like, this is clearly a Wachowski movie. Like, they they both definitely had a had a had their hands in this. So, uh, but well, back to this. Back to this one. Yes. Because that... <laughs> well, I mean, I, what? Go ahead. Go ahead, Carter. I was gonna say because then once, so the movie basically Natalie Portman works for like the TV station, and that's when um, V comes in and uh, plays a video like, "Okay, in one year, like I'm gonna come back, yibbity yuha," and then. Natalie kind of gets involved involved in a scuffle, so V has to take her to his fucking uh, his lair, and is like, "Hey, you can't really leave, cause uh, cause <laughs> like, cause yeah. he's he's like they he's like funny. you're fucked. He's like you're yeah. fucked, basically." Yeah, I was like, "Well, you kind of put her in that situation there, bud." <laughs> she tried to save him though. She, she did. Tried to yeah, save yeah, that's true. But I mean, yeah. you can kind of see that in her like character as well, like like yeah, from it, who she is. She kind of yeah. like shows she doesn't agree with a lot of the things from like the jump yeah but it's but it's like what you said carter it's like with the with the uh, parallel between them it's it's like they may be like different personalities but they are they do represent the same ideals yeah and since evie hasn't been like directly affected as much as v has obviously her ideas are a little more because like they they have a disagreement um about like at the like the at the end of the second act around mm. there um basically evie's like what does she say ba- like just how he's handling it i think you mentioned it cameron like blowing up buildings and stuff oh, like yeah. that so like, it's kind of like a yeah. big yeah i actually wrote a note about that um she says uh so is blowing up a building really gonna change anything and uh he says there's no certainty, only opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, people should not be afraid of their governments. Their governments should be afraid of their people. And that's Hell when he yeah. goes on to saying, like, the building is a symbol, and symbolism, like, is given by a person. And if you destroy that symbol, that power is now gone. Yeah. But then, yeah, yeah. And then, she com- and then when she comes back, V's like, oh, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe 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 it could be a little different, but eh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> but that I, again, that's like that. That's again the testament of the writing, where it's like they're they're three dimensional characters. Where V theoretically V could have been this character that um, didn't have any flaws or or didn't need to change. Like he, if he's the person that represents the idea, then he needs to be the one to like, it, it's okay if he's like, you know, consistent the entire time, but they, they didn't, they made him like an actual person where he like realized. Question. Yeah. Like they, like both him and Evie changed by, because of each other. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a detail that was like, wasn't needed, but it was greatly impacted by making the choice so. yeah because then you just really see v as like a person and like you said not just like the like the math i guess n- mascot for this movement it's like oh there's a whole there's a whole ass brain in there with feeling feelings and shit <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. I, I just thought it was really well done and um like his like his obvious like feelings for her and and stuff like that because right. like when she leaves he like breaks the mirror and 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 when because uh so about near near the movie um not near near the movie near the in movie, the middle yeah. of the movie um evie helps says she wants to help v with like a part of the mission which is like she basically is like posing as a prostitute for the bishop oh but yeah she, that scene like, but this yeah. is what kind of confused me because then I guess, well, I guess she was just like lying to V the whole time because she uses this opportunity to like rat him out and is yeah. And that's when she goes to Stephen Fry's house, which confused me. But I guess it just, 
because I was like, oh, I thought you liked being there, but I guess she was just lying about that. So that part just kind of confused me a little bit. I'm like, what the fuck? This guy's like so nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That kind of confused me too, in a way. Um, it was like, you said you wanted to be a part of it and help out. And he asks you, hey, I got this job to help out. And then you get there and you just straight up rat him out. Like, what was yeah. your plan all along <clears throat> there? Yeah, I... I... I get what you're saying. Kyra. I did kind of have that feeling as well. It was, um, it was more of like, I understand that action. I understand what, you know, her mindset and why she would have done that because this is like the first time that she w- would have gotten a chance to be to, cause she still doesn't agree with him killing anybody, but this would be the first chance that she can maybe change that. However, there wasn't anything that showed that that's what she was trying to do. It It's, she, it's coming around like she's looking like she's warming up to him, but then it it doesn't it doesn't ever shift from that. So you never get the idea that like, oh, she's she's still on edge with him. She's still not sure about him. It's I don't know. It just Could, felt like they missed they cut something out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I can imagine no matter how nice the person is, you're still kind of like a captive <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Like you can yeah, walk, yeah. you're not really a prisoner. You can walk around, do what you want, but you can't really leave that space. So I can understand that that being a mindset. And, but then she, and then so th- then she goes to Stephen Fry's house because V kills the bishop. And then she's at Stephen Fry's for a little bit. Then he gets fucking raided. And we get, we get like a little, because. Evie's parents were killed by the police when she was a kid, and so we got like a little, yeah, a little, a little mirroring action because yeah. she hid under the bed and watched her mom get taken away, and, and then, then she, she hid under Stephen. That time yeah. when she was a kid, and she got taken away. And that shit, oh, had, was, yeah, that shit was. She had nice. to go to like yeah. a some like kind a of detention like, center, yeah, some kind of like detention center, yeah, and then she snuck out the window and got kidnapped, and this. This part I thought was pretty good because then she's in prison and that's when they like shave her head and stuff and we learn about Valerie. That was intense. Notes. That was intense because they that tortured really the intense. fuck out of her. Yeah. And I mean, just not even just like the what they were doing to her, but like the scenes itself from like the lighting and the directing of it. Like, have you noticed that like where the shadows were crossing over the faces and it was just all yeah. dynamic? It was just, oh, it was art. It was yeah, hard. it was, it was, it again, it, it, it did the, like a really good way of translating like what a comic book would feel like, mm-hmm. but for film and mm-hmm. it's not, and it's not like, you know, like Zack Snyder will like completely remake frames. I think it's like using, using a film stylistic or style in the same way that like, that exaggerates what you're trying to say in the same way that comic books can do it. And or or like uh, punctuate as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I didn't know it was just it was clever in the, in that sense. Um, yeah, no, definitely they really wanted to to like take try to just try to make it as like uh, visually visually comic y as possible. Mm-hmm. And I'm but, gonna, without I, dulling it or any or make it too cartoony or anything. Yeah, because yeah. they still wanted it to be to Impactful. be like to be taken seriously. Yeah. 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 And I'm looking at the director's uh, IMDb right now, and he pretty much Viva Vendetta was his first movie. That's Shit. crazy. Then he did Ninja Assassin, Ugh, The Raven oh. with John Cusack. Oh God! Ooh, um, oh, he directed five episodes of Sense Eight, which was created really good. Which uh, Wachowski yeah. sisters? I actually and, really like that show. Yeah, I've heard that's really good. I, I I might check it out. I I have yet I have yet to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those shows that like forces a bigger perspective on the audience. It's a pretty good show. All right. right. All right. Um I'm I'm looking through so <laughs> I'm I just been kind of scrolling through the trivia uh stuff and this is this is something that caught my eye. Uh the secret police, uh, which are called the Fingermen, that you that you hear. <laughs> yeah. right. I, I know, I know. They're called it's the Fingermen. Stupid yeah, I fucking that. name. I, I know. <laughs> it, it sounds it sounds weird when they say it too. Like I'm just yeah. like I can't take it seriously. But it's called. They're called the Fingermen because the New Order was arranged on the model of the human body. 
the mm-hmm. chancellor, which is John Hurt, uh, was the head. The television station BTN was the mouth. Visual and audio surveillance were the eyes and ears. Inspector Finch, which is uh, Stephen Ray, was part of the nose, which um, I kind of understand that, I guess. And the police force, uh, the police force and Creedy's secret police were the hand. So it's like, if you think of it in that sense, it's like, if a force is a hand, then each the, finger is part of that force. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was totally like, totally forgot about that investigator character. Until I know. You just now brought him up. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that that was a whole, that's a whole second ass half of this. Yeah. Story. But I mean, I could honestly understand that though, because his was, his little story arc was a little confusing. I get it, but it's like this movie was also like how long was this movie? Like two hours. Yeah, two hours. You know, it. I mean, you probably could have cut out like made this a ninety-minute movie if you cut out. I don't know. Like now that I'm thinking about it, I think his whole journey was interesting too because he like near the end, like by the end of the movie, he doesn't stop Natalie Portman from sending the train to parliament because yeah. he, he kind of starts to question his own. He's mm. like, okay, something r- clearly wrong is going on here. And he just, he's just like, has to be complicit or else he's, like his own life is at yeah. stake. And he, yeah. he's starting to realize like, Oh, that's not a thing. And I, cause then there's that scene where he's talking to like his, uh, like his second hand or like other his investigator or whatever. Yeah. Like he closes the door. He's just like, okay, basically he's like hypothetically. And then like, what if like this is what's going on just what if what if this is what's happening yeah and- yeah and what kind of took me away from that storyline though is when he said that um there was also a scene not too long after it where he was like uh when he was face to face with v like the rookwood uh dude and um uh, like when he's like, oh shit, he was right under our noses. No, fuck that guy. We're gonna capture him. We're gonna take him. And it's like he was flip flopping all over the place. So that's why yeah. I'm like, it kind of confused me on that story arc. Well, I mean, to piggyback of like what Carter was saying, I think I think that aspect was um, near the end as it comes because yeah, he is flip flopping because mm-hmm. he's going between what he feels and his job. So if you. I think with him stop not stopping uh, Natalie Portman, Evie, uh, from blowing up Parliament, it it's that he almost becomes that symbol that like, okay, well the establishment can change too, like this, like if if people were in the right mindset, like the whole system can change. So yeah, in a in a way, inside. like in a way, his action like proved more than the people's action that this changes not just possible, but like it it is most likely going to have an effect. Right. Like not only the public has these opinions, but people on the inside are starting to have these same opinions the public are. It's going to grow and it's going to change. Yeah. That, you know, I, I take back what I said. He's a good part. (laughs) (laughs) I just forgot. I just forgot he existed. It's been a while because I was watched the movie like two weeks two weeks ago so uh, yeah, na- yeah naturally things start to fade <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm getting older i mean I'm shit. More things. i watched it last night took notes and still things are kind of fading in and out of my memory <laughs> i'm like scrolling through my notes here i'm just like oh shit uh oh yeah that happened <laughs> yeah uh well is there any like last minute trivia stuff that you guys found about this movie apparently um V was wearing a mask the whole time, and he's not just a ventriloquist. Oh, God! That's yeah. it. That was uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. Oh, oh, I really, I really liked the scene when V went to kill the doctor, who was oh, like responsible yeah. for all the research. Yeah. We that oh, and, yeah. And v, I have a along, that too. Yeah. V, along with like a uh, like all, what, it was pretty much all the poor people. Right? Yeah, it, it was, was all it the was poor people looking for opportunity. Yeah, yeah. They, they were doing experiments on them for science, and it was led by like this doctor who is like a coroner in for the police department. Now. Yeah, she hides. Yeah, she hides herself as the coroner, and V finds out that it's her and goes and visits her. Oh man, 
and and that scene was really intense because it she, was because she know she because now she feels regret for what she did. So mm-hmm. she's like, "Are you here to kill me?" He said, "Yeah," and she said, "Thank God." And then they have the like, whole Oof. conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, like my note. She's like, yeah, she's I, like, "I didn't know." Like I didn't know that this that like it would come to this, and he's like, "It's because of you that I'm that this happened." Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "It oh, all started me. from you." Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. and then she's like, "So are you gonna kill me?" And he's like, "I did ten minutes ago," and holds up a syringe and shit. And I'm like, "Yo, what the fuck? You planned this out perfectly. Yeah. You, had, you injected her, had a little combo." In oh yo that scene was was sleeping oh yeah my note was that corner scene is fucking poetry like it was great yeah and then he still had like the mercy to give her something that would kill her painlessly yeah Yeah. she asked will it hurt and he's like no she says thank you and that thank you was just "Mm." was just like oh i was like yeah they're they're little their interaction it's a testament to her acting too, especially if you're oh, just yeah. talking with, with the mask. Like she was, she just looked like she had so much, so much baggage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pain, Pain regret. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we so that, too. that was a cool. That was a cool little. Again, adding a lot of like elements to and complexity to the story. That, that yeah. was really really nice. All, um, all of the scenes, because like this is this this was probably the parts the the scenes for me where it felt really um like poignant about like everything that's going on in the United States right now when they would have the meetings with the chancellor and he would just tell them like what lies to tell like oh tell them we'll do, tell them this happened just tell yeah. them this happened yeah and then saying like because in the when we first meet V and he plays, what's that song that he plays? Uh, like he plays that yeah. one, right? Yeah. yeah. He, he's like, ban that song. Like we don't ever want to hear that right song away. again. Like, it, it, yeah. just, it just really, those were the scenes where I was just like, Oh, that's what is going on here. Like our media is very, very tailored. Yeah. People, people are literally being lynched and they're like, Oh no, like they committed suicide. It's like in what fucking world? Yeah. Like in what fucking world? Like, so Mm -hmm. some, some of this movie was like, I guess really just, just really heavy, just really heavy to watch in this, in this climate, just in this climate. Yeah. But it was also very like, like invigor, invigorating in a way. It kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of hope because people are, yeah, have been, like are aware and have been talking about it and and you know makes you like those ideals it's funny because those ideals that he's presenting are the ideals that like that this country is opposing yeah <laughs> we're getting deep right now um and also i i just also think it's funny that this movie's technically takes place in 2020 so yeah you know, that's another reason that why i wanted to kind of choose this movie because it's like it's so hard to it see was, this other than relating to this time. Yeah. If you don't if you really don't connect this movie with what's happening now, you are so blind to yeah, what's going on. Yeah. 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 So um well and it's in this movie like birthed, <laughs> you know, anonymous, which is yeah. oh yeah. Which yeah. has been a big part in stopping bad shit since this movie started. Oh yeah. yeah. Since this movie came out. And so like I just think it's wild. Like it's fucking. It's so wild to me how people, people like right now are like, oh, like why, why are you peaceful and shit? Like why are you doing it this way when li- like movies like this were literally coming out fifteen years ago? Yeah, and it's like it's not just a movie. Like this is how this is like like this is how you need to react. Yeah, to stuff like this and everything that's like going on in America right now. Like every like fully fully support all this uprising and mm. stuff like yeah. that because it's a it's it's about time oh yeah fucking and shit like that and you know protests haven't stopped it's it's awesome yeah I, the voice needs um, to be yelled constantly mm-hmm. and and we and stand with them bit. yeah yes we do <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah no 100 percent 100 stand with them they're still so a lot of GoFundMe's going on. Just gotta, just like, just look, just look, everybody. Yeah, look, look for who needs help. Look, 
like just help help what you can because okay. yeah because honestly like I, like they need like they need it out there shit shit's just happening and it's crazy yeah like, man it won't happen until everybody until more people you know like we yeah. said has the the idea the s- same ideas and more people wear those guy fox masks and that's what we need <laughs> yeah yeah we need more we need yeah, more we need guy more. fox masks <laughs> We need more masks. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's yeah, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> uh, this this year, uh, uh, well, I think that might conclude this entire con- this whole country's existence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that might bring us to near the end. We're kind of getting to the one hour mark, but uh, Cameron, thank you for. I- I'm really glad you chose this movie. I hadn't seen it in a while, and uh, I yeah. was. It's a it's a good movie. Like fundamentally, like it's a just a good movie. Yeah, it was just nice to like kind of come back to it and be like, "Fuck, I forgot." Yeah, about it's this fun. Film. It's got a good cadence. It's got a good rhythm to it. Yeah, it's just it's just it's enjoyable. You know, it's a good movie. Um, yeah. I, oh yeah, do we want to like want to rate this movie? How do how do we want to rate it? Um, I will give this movie seven V's out of ten. Nice. Okay. That is that is a very fair uh, assumption. I like that. Uh, Cameron, what would you what would you give it? Uh, I would have to say since it is my favorite, I have to be a little bit more biased, and I probably have to give it like an eight point five. Okay. For sure. Um, I and and it's and it's kind of interesting because I, I, you know, like I I like this movie. It's not my favorite movie, but I can't see anything really wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Like I probably yeah, would give either. it, I probably would give this a nine, and literally it's not a ten just because it's like, I don't know, it's not one of those. Yes, yeah, I, I want to put it. Like, yeah, I want to your seat kind of movie. Yeah, right? exactly. But I really can't find a problem with it. I can't find yeah. any reason to criticize it. It's a good movie. You're gonna yeah. enjoy it. You're it's gonna stick with you, and uh, it's competently made. So uh, I give it a nine. Um. Yeah. I love that. Sweet. I love that. Uh, that ruling is great. <laughs> it gives it. It's pretty fair, you know. Yeah. Seven, yeah. eight and a half, and nine. As it should be. Everything As should be should, fair. Everything should be fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, again, Cameron, thank you. Uh, did you? Do you have anything to plug? Uh, I mean, not really much, but I do have an Instagram. Uh, if you want to check that out, is the underscore ocean underscore groom. Uh, I do mostly just like street photography and now recently like star photos. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You've been definitely doing a lot more stuff and, and, and this guy takes BTS photos for us and he makes this. Oh killer yeah. BTS photos, this, guy, so. this guy right here, this guy right here. I and mean, I, so, I, yeah, I guess <laughs> any, any type of like BTS stuff you see is his work and it's, it's, it's really good. So I would, I would check it out. Uh, and we'll we'll put your the handle in like the description so Thank people you. appreciate just it list it. Uh, but I mean, anything else? Or are you just kind of? Uh, no, that's uh. I mean, I don't really okay. post on my YouTube, so I can't really plug that. <laughs> so okay. yeah, All thank right. you uh, yeah. for having me on, guys. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, you can follow us at In Pursuit of Nothing. Uh, on uh, all the social handles. Well, In Pursuit of Nothing on Instagram, uh, IPN Studio at Twitter, and In Pursuit of Nothing on Facebook. But Instagram is is the place to be. Um, and I I mean, you can follow me on Instagram too if you like. Alex Basias, Instagram, Twitter. Do whatever you like. You can follow me, Carter WBT, on both Instagram and Twitter. I made my Twitter public. So have at it, everybody. Whoa. Uh, but you cannot Finally, message we can me. Find you. <laughs> you cannot message me unless I follow you back. So don't even try. <laughs> Instagram's still private. So you know, always as always, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> and uh, this episode is edited by AJ Santos. You can follow him at uh, Shmay five six two on Instagram, and uh, check out his. He has a SoundCloud as well, but he just put out a new song on Spotify. So uh, check him out at Shmay, S-H-M-A-Y. I'm like, I think you forgot how to spell it. I'm like, oh, right? no. I'm like, I thought I was like, like one shit. Fuck. Yeah, I fucked it up. Um, Card, do you want to close it out? 
Yeah. Well, again, Cameron, you know, thank you for being on. Thank you. Thank you you for all you listeners out there who keep up with us each week. Be sure to tune in next Monday where you will listen to us make sandwiches and sing old hymnals. Interesting. That one. Praise God from whom all blessings.